Hi, ah, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is the Earth is a Hollow Space Station documentary. A lot of good facts to support this. But as always, you decide. I'm just going to get right into this, ladies and gentlemen. Because there's really no time to waste. There is an epic amount of information on this. Not to mention with my very own photo from my own cell phone being used as the template for this. Look at the moon, ladies and gentlemen. That thing looks like an actual sun. You can't tell me the sun is reflecting off that. That is, and looks like it is, giving off a light. That does not happen under normal means by reflection. At least not that bright. Looks like you put a 9-volt battery to an LED, and you lit up the LED, folks, or a generic bulb. So, without further ado, I'm going to start on this because there is a lot of information. I'm just trying to wait for all of my uh, web pages to get up and running. So, anyways, folks, this is the idea here. Hang on, I think they're trying to hack me. I truly believe they're trying to hack me. Okay, so without further ado here, I'm bringing you this from my first page, which is actually called Space Station Moon, but has a lot of good... Uh, information. Basically it says, you ever notice that basically over the last couple of years there's almost no mentioning of all the oddities of the moon, this and that. And basically that looking at the moon kind of gives you creeps. Well, NASA basically hasn't returned to the moon in over 40 years and has supposedly had 12 men walk on it. Now, I, I disbelieve the idea that we were at the moon not so strongly that we were never on the moon, but that we were shown the training video of being on the moon and that there are holes in the actual firmament of which spacecrafts can come and go uh, with non- super technology to basically teleport through what I understand to be almost a mile of uh, firmament. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot going on inside the moon. And like anything, ladies and gentlemen, you have a lot of different strange things. I'm trying to get this here. You know what? Maybe it's better if I pause this for you. Because I'm getting actually a lot of interference here, which is very, very strange. Almost like they're hacking me again. Okay, so if you can still hear me, this is the idea. In Apollo 12, there was an experiment. Indeed, there was. Despite technical malfunctions preventing Apollo 13 crews from landing on the moon, the crashing of the Saturn V third stage rocket, S-4B, into the moon made the moon ring like a bell, not for one hour, not for two hours, ladies and gentlemen, but for three constant hours. And I'm bringing you this because this is flipping important. This is so important, in fact, it is almost absolutely important that we start on this fact alone because this is something the alternative media, the alternative sciences, the indoctrination science groups like NASA have put out.
So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this right here was the ringing of the moon for three whole hours. This was stated by NASA after the Saturn V third stage S4B crashed into the moon and rang for three hours. This was the 1960s, folks. So this was a very interesting event. And from that, we heard it ring like a bell for not one, not two, but three hours. And something doesn't ring like a bell, ladies and gentlemen, if it is not actually hollow. Now, NASA's headquarters in Houston, Capcom, made this remark to the a a Apollo 13 astronauts. Aquarius, we see the results now from 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's rocking a little bit. So not only did it ring a bell, but it, the seismometer, seismometer actually rang and moved the moon. It shook the moon, ladies and gentlemen. So why did it ring like a bell? Many scientists opposed to the idea of hollow moon argue lunar crust would have to be extremely dense in order to support the theory. Based on behavioral objects interacting with the moon's gravitational field, there's a whole lot of different things you can understand from this. But we'll just take it as very, very simple facts here and just say it rang like a bell. Okay? Now here's an opening here, ladies and gentlemen, of the actual moon. It kind of looks like somebody cut it out or um, photoshopped it, but we'll go with it. There could be entrances to a geological wonderland, tunnels that offer a perfect radiation shield to, to a benign thermal environment. Various other scans were done and various other things. I'm trying to get into the meat and potatoes here, folks. So I can't do that if I'm not showing you the little bits and pieces. There's lots of people here that talk about different things from Apollo 13, 14, all the way up to Apollo 21. And what we come to decide, ladies and gentlemen, is that NASA admitted during the Apollo 13 mission, the moon rang like a bell. That does not happen if it is not hollow in some way or another. A simple spacecraft hitting a planet does not simply make it run ring like a bell. And there's a good theory to support this. It was developed in, in July of 1970 by Mikhail Vason and Alexander uh, Shobakov. An article entitled, Is the Moon the Creation of Alien Intelligence? I have not only the, the uh, Wikipedia, but an original interpretation of the actual article that they wrote. Now, I'm going to go through this. This is dry, but it does tell you a lot. This spaceship moon theory is also known as the vazen Sherbakov theory. And in hypothesis, it claims the Earth's moon, at least the big one we can see, may actually be a spacecraft. I disagree with that idea. I believe space station is a lot closer to what it actually is because it doesn't really do anything but just observe us. That's why there's a giant light on it. We see the sun's light in the morning. We see the moon's light at night, oddly enough. Uh, and nobody ever talks about the dark side of the sun, ladies and gentlemen. Why haven't we ever talked about the sun having a dark side? It doesn't. Well, then t let's see the back side of the sun, folks. Oh, it rotates and everything? Yeah, 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 okay. So anyways, the hypothesis goes as forward. The two members of the Soviet Academy of Sciences, so these were pristine scientists, ladies and gentlemen. They weren't just schmoes off the street 
who were given titles. Uh, Mikhail Vasin and Alexander uh, Sherbakov in July 1970 published a paper as the Moon Creation of Alien Intelligence. Uh, Vasin and Sherbakov's thesis on the moon is hollowed out planetoid created by unknown beings with technology far superior to any on Earth, at least in our current history and current history cycle. Huge machines would have been used to melt rock and form large cavities within the moon, resulting in molten lava spewing onto the moon's surface. The moon would therefore consist of Hulk-like inner shell and an outer shell made of metallic rock slag. For reasons of unknown, the spaceship moon, quote-unquote, was placed into orbit around the Earth. Their hypothesis relies heavily on suggesting that the larger lunar craters generally assumed form by meteor impact are generally too shallow and have flat or even convex bottoms. Small craters have a depth of proportional to the diameter, but the larger craters are not deeper. It is hypothesized that small meteors are making a cup-shaped depression in the rocky surface of the moon, while larger meteors are drilling through five-mile-thick rocky layers, hitting a high tensile hull underneath. Additionally, the authors note that the surface material of the moon is substantially composed of different elements, chromium, titanium, and zirconium, from the Earth's surface. They also note that the moon's rocks are older than the oldest rocks on the planet, which means it could have never formed from the actual Earth. The postulate that the moon comprises of a rocky outer layer a few miles thick, covering a stronghold perhaps 20 miles thick beneath that is a void possibly containing an atmosphere. In 1975, Don W. Wilson published Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon, in which he compiled that he consisted, considered supporting facts for the hypothesis. In 1976, George H. Leonard published Somebody Else is on the Moon and reprinted numerous NASA photographs of lunar surface, suggesting that the large scale machinery was visible in these pictures from the surface. Readers have generally not been able to find these artifacts. Alright, so we get into a little bit here and there. I really don't want to test this much because it just goes into popular culture and criticisms which I want to kind of keep from this but it offers a lot of intriguing Mathematics, so I'm going to get into this. Uh, Suniti Kunikov of Cornell University suggests that there are at least two ways to determine the, diff the, uh, the distribution of mass within a body. In other words, find out if something inside something is hollow or not hollow and what its density is. One involves moment momentum of inertia perimeters, and the other involves seismic observation. We already know the Earth trembles and moves, therefore seismic observations can be observed. In this case, of the, formal, of the former uh, Karunkulite, the, the person I was mentioning before, points out that one such perimeter, the normal polar moment of inertia, is 0.393 plus or minus 0.001. And I do not know what unit they are using, which is very close to a, to that for a solid object with radially constant density 0.4 comparison to Earth value is 0 0.33. So in other words, it does give comparison that it is hollow at some point in the center, or that it can be hollow to some degree at 0.3 into 0.4. Uh, and this would be the diameter of the inside value as a whole. As the latter, this guy notes that the moon is the only planetary body besides Earth on which extensive seismic observations have been made. The observations have constrained the thickness of the moon's crust mantle core, suggesting it could not be hollow. Well, I disagree with that. But as always, folks, you and you can decide whatever you want. However, I believe it's hollow for many, many reasons. Uh, 
because these guys' math is not completely the way it should be anyways. Also, they haven't listed it, so I'm not going to even go into that. But what I am going to go into, uh, I'm going to try to go into as much as I can into this other information here, and I will show you some of this. All right, so this is the original document here. These guys published. Mikhail Vasin and Alexander Sherbanov, scientists, is the creation of the moon in, of intelligence. So we come here, and basically, I, I like this because it says, although people long ago began to wonder whether the canals of Mars were the creation of cosmic engineers and odd reasons to get the idea, basically, they basically came up with theories that said uh, water used to be there and all these other things which led to the perplexities when examining the lunar landscape uh, which is much closer at hand and all the arguments above the possibilities of intelligent life existing on the celestial bodies have been confirmed or confined to the idea that other civilizations must necessarily live on the surface of a planet and not the interior of a habitat such as a moon. Well, anyone would say that the first time humans came out, they came out of what? They came out of caves, supposedly? Well, what happens that you are told you have to go underground, folks? Tsunamis, earthquakes, natural disasters, non-natural disasters. So a civilization looking to survive hundreds of thousands of years, if not ten thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, wouldn't it be more practical that they build a spacecraft out of an existing meteor, or which is a theory being, being pushed around by NASA to capture a meteor, hollow it out, and have a vehicle that they can use to tour around the solar system? So if we can theorize that, we can theorize that an ancient civilization, one superior to ours, could have actually done that to a body that has died out or nearly died out and that is why you do not see an actual atmosphere around the moon because it is a hollowed out shell which is what I believe which is what you and I see every day alright so let's get back to these guys Mikhail Vasin and Alexander Sherbanov or Sherbakov all right, so basically they said an artificial Sputnik of the Earth, or an artificial satellite of the Earth. The origin of the moon is one of the most pr complicated problems in cosmogony. So far, there have been basically three th hypotheses under discussion. And remember, this was back then in like the 1950s, 60s, and 70s they wrote this, so this is probably different now. Hypothesis one. The moon was once part of Earth, broke away from it. Uh, I think it was Thera or something like that, we were told, is supposed to be at least partly true. Well, I think that is partly true, but I think it was eventually replaced by something much bigger, that is the space station that watches over us at night. Hypothesis 2. The moon was formed independently from the same cloud of dust and gas that the Earth immediately became Earth's natural satellite. Again, I think it was... And I think somebody hollowed it out and or replaced it with what exists today. And that's why you see the giant light in the sky. Hypothesis 3. The moon came into being separately and moreover from far from Earth, perhaps even out of the solar system. This would mean that the moon would not have the fashioned from the same clay as our own planet, which we've been saying it is not. Uh, sailing through the universe, the moon came into Earth's proximity by a complex interplay of forces, uh, various things, the gravity, gravities and other forces were brought uh, the object into geocentric orbit, uh, very close to circular. Uh, da, 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 da. But a catch of this kind is virtually impossible. Yeah, but we don't know. It could have taken them 60 times to do it or 600 times. We would have never really known because we would have been coming out of the caves again after the fall of uh, other civilizations and such since this is like our third or fourth time around uh, in at least the last million years or so 
In fact, the scientists basically studying the origin of the universe today have no acceptable theory to explain how the Earth-Moon system came into being. Our hypothesis, this is the Vasin uh, other guy theory, or Sherbanuk theory. Uh, the Moon is an artificial Earth satellite put into orbit around the Earth by some intelligent beings unknown to ourselves. We refuse to engage in speculation about who exactly staged the unique experiment, which only is highly developed civilization capable of this feature. Now, this is actually very funny. They kind of look at this from a Noah's Ark standpoint. If you're going to launch an artificial Sputnik, which is satellite, then it's advisable to make it hollow. At the same time, it would be naive to imagine that anyone capable of such a tremendous space project would be satisfied simply with some kind of giant empty trunk hurled into near-Earth trajectory. It is more likely that what we, ha what we have seen here is very ancient spacecraft, the interior of which is was filled with fuel for the engines, materials, appliances for repair work, navigation instruments, observ uh, observational equipment, Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry about that, I lost my place. In all manner of machinery, in other words, everything necessary to enable this uh, caravel of the universe to serve as some kind of Noah's Ark of intelligence, perhaps even as the home of a whole civilization, uh, basically to prolong thousands of millions of years and basically, it just basically stopped there, probably because it ran out of fuel, who knows what. But anyways, in existence and long wandering through space, thousands of millions of miles, yeah, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, so naturally, the hull of such a spacecraft must be tough in order to stand up to the blows of meteorites, sharp fluctuations between extreme heat and extreme cold. Probably the shell is double layered affair, the basis of a dense armoring of about 20 miles of thickness, which is exactly what I predicted, folks. What did I say? I didn't read this before. I'm just giving you the stats. That's what I'm here to do, give you the info. And the outside is some kind of more loosely packed covering, a thinner layer averaging about three miles. It's kind of what I figured. Uh, kind of similar to the, uh, to the planet they showed in the Star Wars movie, in Star Wars Awakening. Hang on, folks. I got a kitty that's being uh, stubborn. So we have here all this. All right, where was I at? I apologize, folks. One second. All right, so naturally the whole of this... Uh, of such a spacecraft would be super tough. I did that. Uh, 20 miles in thickness and outside would be about 3 miles. Inner layer averaging about 3 miles. Uh, in certain areas where the lunar seas and craters are, the upper layer is quite thin. In some cases, non-existent. Kind of see a lot of that in some aspects or another. Since the moon's diameter is 2,100 and 62 miles, given the math they use for the round Earth, I would definitely change that and see what the actual diameter is, and one day I'll do that for you. Uh, then look at from a point of view, it is thin walled, it is a thin walled sphere, so basically just given the appearance of an actual celestial body when it could just be a big metal object staring at you all day long and you would never know the difference. And understandably, not an empty one. Uh, there could be all kinds of materials and equipment on its inner surface, but the greatest proportion of the lunar mass is concentrated in the central part of the sphere, in its core, which has a diameter of 2,062 miles. This is something they calculated back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, folks. So they calculated this from 2,162 miles in diameter to 262 miles in diameter. So I'm trying to show you this. I will show you this here. Basically from this to this. And that's how they calculated the inner space. 
And remember, NASA said it rang like a bell, folks. You can only get it to ring like a bell if, in fact, it was hollow. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what material it is, you would not get it to ring like a bell, not for three hours constantly, folks. And I'd love to get the inside information on that to find out what the frequency was, what the tone, what the pitch, what the treble was, what the volume, what all the inner mathematics of that thing was. Because if you could set that frequency, you could definitely ring that thing to where the aliens come running. And you could also use it to set harmonics and all sorts of things and use it as a giant satellite, which is what I actually think it is. I think it gives off some kind of resonance frequency we can't pick up at this point, among other things like the giant light. So anyways, with such an internal structure, the moon could have an average specific gravity of 3.3 grammars per cubic centimeter, which differs consistently to our 5.5 grammars uh, per cubic centimeter on Earth. Uh, I disagree with some of this stuff that they have here at the bottom, which says, you know, could it be a battleship or could it be a torpedo? I think it's actually just supposed to be a space station. I think that's exactly what it serves as an observatory of some sort for Earth. And like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think that Earth is an actual planet. I think it was set up here from a hollowed out planet a while ago. They came, they restored it, they put a dome on the top, and we are a zoo. And I'll cover that in another documentary, because according to various sources, this is what it is. It's a zoological experiment. And that is exactly what it is. A surprising thing, I'm going back to the uh, paper. So, the surprising thing is that however big the meteorites and everything may be, it have fallen onto the moon. Some have been more than 60 miles in diameter. However fast they might have been traveling. In some cases, combined speed being 38 miles per second. The craters they have left behind are some of the odd reasons. All of their depths are 1.2 to 2 miles. Although the very tremendously in diameter. So let me show you this because this part's important, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, it says from all the big meteorites that have hit the moon. Some have been more than 60 miles in diameter. However fast they may be traveling, such cases of 38 miles per second, the craters that they have left behind have some odd reason are all the same depth, 1.2 to 2 miles in depth, along with various tremendous diameters. In other words, folks, when these things hit, they don't go down more than 1.2 to 2 miles. An average comet or asteroid or meteorite that hits should penetrate 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 miles. And then its diameter of the shock should be way more. We see these things going down 1.2 to 2 miles. And the diameter is the only thing that's actually massive. So that means that hollow out part has something that is protecting it. For such big holes, it's too shallow. Furthermore, the bottom of the crater is convex. Following the curve of the lunar surface, if you were to stand in the middle of the crater, you would not even be able to see the soaring edge. So. They're giving you some ideas here, folks, and you can read this. I'll, I'll post this with it. That there is a lot of evidence, ladies and gentlemen, to support this. This is not just, oh, this is an idea. No, these are facts, ladies and gentlemen. We understand that time's taken its toll on it. Both body and rigging, or ringing have disintegrated uh, some of the extent of the moon. Uh, some of the seams of the inner shell evidently divulged. Um, you can see that in various photos. I'm not going to get into that because right now my computer is crap. Um, that the long up to 940 miles chains of small craters formerly 
ascribed to volcanic activity. So at one point it was alive. Were brought about by eruptions and gas through cracks appearing in the armor plating as well as a result of act. Uh, of accidents. I don't know so much about what they mean in armor plating. That needs to kind of be explained a little bit because I don't want to take that out of context to mean actual armor plating. But I think they meant like the rocky shell of it. No doubt one of the most splendid features of the lunar scape is a straight wall nearly 500 yards high, 60 miles long, formed as a result of one of the armor plates bending under impact celestial torpedoes and raising one of its straight into an even edge. So they should definitely put uh, pictures up for that. But I'm sure you've seen various pictures for that. Uh, stocks and materials and machinery for doing this are no doubt still where they were and are sufficiently massive to give rise to these gravitational anomalies. So basically they're asking, what is the moon today? Is it a colossal necropolis, a city of the dead, where some form of life became extinct? Is it a cosmic flying Dutchman, a craft abandoned by its crew, controlled automatically? Well, I think it's actually still in use, and I think there are lots of, lots of information here, folks. I think one of these such uh, things is that it's still in use today. And I think there's probably several portals, probably various points, where you and I and everybody else can actually go into the center, probably from the holes on the moon along with other things. So I'll leave this to you and your fancy, but all in all, I believe the moon to be still in use, and it's still a space station of some sort or another. And I believe that when the sun is not showing its light, the moon actually kicks in and shows its light. I do believe that the surface of the moon does have an internal system, whether it be volcanic in nature, how they could curve their own volcanic ability into energy or some other form can produce a giant light at night. Um, I believe the way they describe the uh, the moon in, uh, in quarters and halves and different pieces is the way that they were, are able to um, bring the light into focus and charge whatever they need so that they have perfect light at, say, six out of every... I don't know, 20 days or so, and they show for three or four of those six days possible. So about three times a month or so, we see a near-perfect moon, and that is when they can do all their situations and experiments thereof. Ladies and gentlemen, this picture is from my phone. This is not, I did not Photoshop this picture that you're seeing this of. This is a picture from my phone that is the moon in question. And that is the actual light of the actual moon. So this is why I have always believed that the moon has always been some kind of space station. I actually believe that the beings that were human before the fall of Atlantis or any other time in which humanity has fallen are actually the people who are supposed to watch us from the moon. You ever hear of uh, the man on the moon watching you? Where the hell do you th remember that coming from? Oh, it's not a space station. The man on the moon watches you. Oh, it does. It it does. They do watch you. The men on the moon watch you. I remember that through the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s shows all the time. Where do you think that kind of talk comes from? It comes from the same place where the movies and stuff leak small bits of information that you're being watched and I guarantee you if we were given clearance and all the information we could use and all the spacecrafts and everything we could get to that object and we could find out that that thing is actually a space station of one sort or another whether it's just an observation deck for earth or whether it can actually move I don't know 
I believe beyond a reasonable doubt, though, it is nothing but an observation deck at this point. Now, does it send out signals? Are we a Truman Show? All this other stuff? Yeah, probably. What's the point of having an observation deck if you're not transmitting information? To where? That becomes a good question. Lots of questions arise from this, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of good, solid information. And even NASA made it ring like a bell from a single rocket from the 50s and 60s, ladies and gentlemen. I know there are people who say, oh my god, we did not go to the moon, we can't even pass the Van Allen belt. I believe we've discovered technology that has gotten us past that. Whether or not you want to believe that rickety little spaceship was sent up and they came down in their little orbiter that was paper thin and all this other stuff. Whether or not you want to believe that, that is your personal belief. But I believe the moon documentary or the, 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 the footage we've seen of the moon was actually of their training videos to go to the moon. And that we have always just been told differently. I guarantee you we've been there. I guarantee you we've been beyond the firmament. I guarantee you lots of other things. And I think we've used technology that we've had since nearly the 40s and 50s to do it. And the little rockets and stuff you've seen is just their proportional status quo of technology to show you. But I guarantee you we've re-engineered those spaceships that have fallen and we have been to those planets. We have been to these places. We have, I guarantee you, a colony on Mars, probably a colony with inside the hollow space station, moon, whatever you want to call it. And I guarantee you we have direct relations with ETs in our solar system and beyond. I guarantee you not only do the elites know, but the general population is supposed to be a worker bee force that is here for experimentation. The zoological experiment, I forget what it's called, but the, I ran across the theory and it actually made a lot of sense when I heard about it. And that is what my next video will be on. You guys loved my Earth videos. This one definitely flipping is true or at least nearly true. There is so much information here, ladies and gentlemen. If you cannot look up at the moon at night and see that light, and remember hearing in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, probably 90s, the men on the moon are watching you. Look at that light. They are watching you. That's their camera. That's their flash. That's their constant, whatever you want to, whatever reference you want, ladies and gentlemen. Those kind of references don't leak to the public unless the private sector in control of this wants some kind of disclosure that this thing is not what it's supposed to be. And as always, folks, you decide this is the moon, it's a hollow space station documentary, and like I said, as always, you guys can decide. As soon as I can get it to close, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as I can get it to close, ladies and gentlemen, I will close it. This is The Moon is a Hollow Space Station documentary, and you can decide. God bless and thank you for tuning in. As soon as I can get it to close, I almost got it once. I can probably get it again. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is the Earth. It's a hollow space station documentary. A lot of good facts to support this. But as always, you decide. I'm just going to get right into this, ladies and gentlemen. Because there's really no time to waste. There is an epic amount of information on this. 
Not to mention with my very own photo from my own cell phone being used as the template for this. Look at the moon, ladies and gentlemen. That thing looks like an actual sun. You can't tell me the sun is reflecting off that. That is and looks like it is giving off a light. That does not happen under normal means by reflection. At least not that bright. Looks like you put a 9 volt battery to an LED and you lit up the LED folks or a generic bulb. So without further ado I'm going to start on this because there is a lot of information. I'm just trying to wait for all of my uh, web pages to get up and running. Crashing of the Saturn V third stage rocket S4B into the moon made the moon ring like a bell, not for one hour, not for two hours, ladies and gentlemen, but for three constant hours. And I'm bringing you this because this is flippin' important. This is so important, in fact, it is almost absolutely important that we start on this fact alone because this is something the alternative media, the alternative sciences, the indoctrination science groups like NASA have put out. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this right here was the ringing of the moon for three whole hours. This was stated by NASA after the Saturn V third stage S4B crashed into the moon and rang for three hours. This was the 1960s, folks. So this was a very interesting event video of being on the moon and that there are holes in the actual firmament of which spacecrafts can come and go uh, with non super technology to basically teleport through what I understand to be almost a mile of uh, firmament so anyways ladies and gentlemen there's a lot going on inside the moon. And like anything, ladies and gentlemen, you have a lot of different strange things. I'm trying to get this here. You know what? Maybe it's better if I pause this for you. Because I'm getting actually a lot of interference here, which is very, very strange. Almost like they're hacking me again. Okay, so if you can still hear me, this is the idea. In Apollo 12, there was an experiment. Indeed, there was. Despite technical malfunctions preventing Apollo 13 crews from landing on the moon, the... So, anyways, folks, this is the idea here. Hang on, I think they're trying to hack me. I truly believe they're trying to hack me. Okay, so without further ado here, I'm bringing you this um, my first page, which is actually called Space Station Moon, but has a lot of good... Uh, information. Basically it says, you ever notice that basically over the last couple of years there's almost no mentioning of all the oddities in the moon, this and that. And basically that looking at the moon kind of gives you creeps. Well, NASA basically hasn't 
returned to the moon in over 40 years and has supposedly had 12 men walk on it. Now, I, I disbelieve the idea that we were at the moon not so strongly that we were never on the moon, but that we were shown the training. And from that, we heard it ring like a bell for not one, not two, but three hours. And something doesn't ring like a bell, ladies and gentlemen, if it is not actually hollow. Now, NASA's headquarters in Houston, Capcom, made this remark to the a a Apollo 13 astronauts. Aquarius, we see the results now from 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's rocking a little bit. So not only did it ring a bell, but it, the seismometer, seismometer actually rang and moved the moon. It shook the moon, ladies and gentlemen. So why did it ring like a bell? Many scientists opposed to the idea of hollow moon argue lunar crust would have to be extremely dense in order to support the theory. Based on behavioral objects interacting with the moon's gravitational field, there's a whole lot of different things you can understand from this. But we'll just take it as very, very simple facts here.